behalf of the Board of Trustees of Central European University, and as Provost of the University, it is my privilege to convene this 18th commencement of Central European University. Please be seated. Today, as ever, we celebrate both an end and a beginning. In this ceremony, we will confer 500 masters and doctoral degrees. Each of these degrees represents a story of commitment, perseverance, dedication and achievement. I would like to extend a special welcome to our Open Society Prize winner, the former President of Finland, the Nobel Peace 2008 Prize laureate, Marti Atisari. and the courage of convictions to combine 
an enormous readiness of flexibility, keeping your most important ideas always in place, and yet to learn to live with contradictions. To learn to live with contradictions, to embrace the contradictions, and to turn them into a positive thing, I think is the most important message for today for everybody. So this is a major message with which I would like to leave you. And as the CEO only tell you how very grateful I am, first of all, to the founder and funder of the University, George Soros, for having established a university which I could really make into a good, not great, but into a good university in the last 10 years, but then also to the students, the faculty, the staff, the board of trustees, for all of them collaborated and cooperated in making it what it is. For this, thank you to all of you. You will meet today my successor, which makes my leading feel very good indeed. John Shattuck is a leading humanist, human rights personality, who will lead this university into a future which indeed combines even more than until now, the social mission with the excellence part. And I think I can say with good feeling that I leave a university which is academically good, administratively streamlined and clean, and financially, thanks to the enormous financial wisdom and intelligence of George Soros, also in good shape. So I'm leaving something as I'm leaving, but you should remain in contact and be proud of what you have and carry on what you have to do. Thank you.
I therefore commend you, walking out of this ceremony, to take your place as leaders representing the very values of this university at a moment of fantastic opportunity. We who are on the stage and we each and every one of you, congratulations. We weren't always so happy with what was going on. Um, we 
advocated for our rights. I think at one point we organized a food strike and I was called into the rector's office about this. Um, we were not as thrilled with the quality of the food. Um, but with that said, and all that, I strongly believe in the overall mission of Central European University. And I, be I believe this because I know that the institution is a career institution making global citizens who literally change the world. I do this and I know this because of the people that I've connected here. There are people in Indonesia doing legal aid that I've connected to Central European University. There's a, a former student of mine in Cambodia who's running a university-based legal clinic focusing on juvenile justice programs. And my honor is one of my recent graduate students from Malaysia will be coming here in August, who is an incredible human rights activist, and he will be in the legal studies program. So I know that CEU works, and I know that it works because people stay connected. Today's your day, and when I say you, I don't mean just you as individuals. I mean you as a collective group who I know and I believe will continue to expand the positive change that Central European University has made in this world. Thank you for all of you taking on this responsibility and for all your hard work in getting here. It's an honor to be among and part of you all. Thank you. Shapiro from New York, United States. Daniel is a candidate for the Master of Arts degree in Public Policy. He's a member of the Department of Public Policy and a scholar in the Erasmus Mondas Master's Program in Public Policy, where he also completed his first year MA degree in Development Studies at the Institute of Social Studies in The Hague, Netherlands. Daniel is also an alumnus of Brandeis University, class of 2003, where he received his undergraduate degree. Daniel plans to return to the U.S. this fall to begin working for the U.S. Department of Energy. In addition to his studies, he is an avid music fan and enjoys traveling to as many new countries as he can. Daniel, please. Hatred, 
ignorance and monotony that plague everyday life. I mean, our most aggressive conflict has been over stolen cheese, and I say more. <laughs> Yet, it is out of this fantasy that we will gain the tools to rebuild reality, to strive for a better world, to gain a better grasp of the history from whence we all came, and to more clearly see the wide spectrum of hues that is humanity. These are our goals now in Technicolor. Bubbles can be warm and cozy, the security blanket escorting us down the path towards complacency. However tempting this may be, stop, turn around, and walk the other way. Stay uncomfortable. Step out of your comfort zone. Challenge yourself to defend your thoughts, ideals, and foundations. You may be surprised how infirm they are and how radically they can change. Walk up to someone new, jump in on a conversation in progress, and let your blood boil. Dissent and debate are the cornerstones of agreement. Our readers and lecturers are but the fuel for the academic fire. Our passion is the spark. Strap on your helmets and charge ahead full steam. Within the bubble, we have the right and responsibility to circumvent superficial courtesy. What I mean is, the formalities and pleasantries of surface-level encounters only serve to delay that which is most valuable, discovering the heart and soul of each person you encounter and growing from the intersection of our world perspectives. Our tools will be so much sharper if we strip down that which daily etiquette has so dutifully taught us a simple hello or goodbye, or the requisite eyebrow raise of recognition. It is insufficient. We're better than that. While we all have the guards and walls of protection around us inculcated from real-world dogma, inside the bubble, we must leap without fear and seek without indecision. Of course, you're now beginning to ask, Whose pedestal did he steal? Who gave him permission to stand so loudly on top of it? All I can say is this. Time will fly, and before we know it, summer 2009 will be here, and we'll use our newly improved, bespectacled hindsight to ask ourselves what could have been. Live with no regrets today, and tomorrow, we'll all reap the rewards that only knowledge and growth can bring. I am far from mastering these lessons, and each day is filled with as many failures and illusions of success as there are glimmerings of hope and personal achievement. To be an international student at CEU, the most valuable lesson we will gain is the skill to connect with another human being with humility, openness, and gratitude. Our future selves will be immeasurably better adept to make positive change. We are all privileged to be here now. Seize it. Heed the call to arms. Because before we know it, the bubble will burst and the fantasy will be over. June 18th, 2009. Congratulations, graduates, and Please watch your step as you exit the bubble. Thank you very much. Thank you, Daniel. As one of the great theorists and practitioners of university education said, following the spirit of that, his motto was, Heart speaks to heart. And uh, I think follows up uh, Daniel's ethic on that. The business school is the only part of CU that has undergraduate programs, and so awards bachelor's degrees. This is the second year in which such degrees are being awarded. The certificates will be presented together with the master's awards with the business schools, so it's not a separate category, formally and not materially. And now we will continue our ceremony with the conferring of master's degrees. 
the heads of the academic departments and programs will be requested to call those candidates for the master's degrees who have fulfilled the requirements for their degrees as provided by the curricula of Central European University and who therefore are recommended to be awarded with master's degrees. The first, the president and rector will make an announcement. Candidate for Bachelor of Business Administration, Bachelor of Science, Master of Arts, Master of Philosophy, Master of Law, Master of Science, and Master of Business Administration. By the authority vested in me by the Charter and Trustees of Central European University, upon your successful completion of the academic requirements, I now confer upon you the Bachelor's and Master's status. Congratulations. US accreditation also received Hungarian accreditation in 2005. This is the fourth academic year when some of our students also receive Hungarian diplomas. The names and degrees of the students who have completed their examinations are acknowledged in the graduation brochure. Candidates for the master's degree of the Department of Economics will be presented by their departmental head, Professor Julius Horvath.
Kotesh, on over. Zachariah and Polka the Sound, United States. Esther Fouillet, Hungary. Joshua Harvey, United States. James Holden, Australia. Irina Levkokimova, Ukraine. Adrienne Chalia, France. Mary Eftich, Bosnia and Herzegovina. Anna Pasha, Russian Federation. Inya Isot, Zinova, Belarus. Agnes Kejman, Hungary. Marcin Marcinski, Poland. Emily May, Germany. Yeah. 
will be presented by the programme head, Professor Anton Kulipa.
Soviet, Chandra Gyako from Hungary, Cosmos Papadopoulos from Greece, Marius Pedesh from Hungary, Thomas Pinhead from Hungary, Carlos Sanchez from Colombia, Thomas Rock from Hungary, Sharata Silagi from Hungary,
upon those candidates who are present. Doctoral candidates, please rise.
Director of Philosophy and Comparative History of Central, Southeastern, and Eastern Europe, Eva Dare from Hungary, escorted by her supervisor, Kathleen Peter. <laughs> Doctor of Philosophy and Mathematics and its Applications, Zoltan Halaji from Hungary, escorted by <laughs> Constitutional law, Stephen 
Ethel, and the secretary, it's my privilege to hand over the prizes to the three best students of the, of the IBL stream. So let me. The third prize goes to Momo Sovashal from Kyrgyz. The second prize goes to Gerese Solomon from Kyrgyz. Mario 
Congratulations, 
give to an outstanding individual whose achievements have contributed substantially to the creation of an open society. And now please welcome George Sorosh, founder of CU and honorary chairman of the board of trustees, who will deliver the laudatio for President Marty Atisari. Long. 
I said, how long should I speak? At least as long as I did. So there you get the instructions from your master. I, I must confess that every time I, I listen to this sort of laudation, I can't help thinking what happened in London, in uh, University College London, and I got an honorary doctorate there. We had a dinner later on, and, and our hosts were introducing any, everyone who got the honorary doctorate. When it was my turn, the rector said, I have been thinking how to compare Antisari to anyone else. And now uh, I have finally, finally found the right comparison. Marty Antisari is a David Beckham of diplomacy. <laughs>
hopefully it will soon become the member of European Development Bank as well. And not already over 90% of the institutions were on, on their face. There was an enormous amount of work to be done, but there was a general spirit of optimism, despite the fact that the country has over 40% unemployment figure. When I was asked, what do you need to do? What are your priorities? I said, first priority is economy, second priority is economy, third priority is economy. Because if you can show your young people they will hope for the future, you, you have done a remarkable thing indeed. I have a habit that when there are crises in the world, like after 9-11 when it happened, I happened to be in 10 Downing Street. And I went back to my hotel and I sat down and I wrote down half a dozen points. What good could come out of this disaster? Same with the financial crisis, for which so Soros has so elegantly been describing and giving us remedies only, only a few days ago, actually yesterday. I, I think you have been proven right on this occasion again. The same with the financial crisis, because I realized that as somebody whose task is to help mediate the conflicts, we have realized all of a sudden that we need much more each other. We can't make peace without the support of the others. Instead of talking about G8, we now talk about G14. G20, the group of people and countries have been expanded. Therefore, for the first time, I'm optimistic that we will also find, with the emergence of Obama and his face in the United States, a way out of the problems we have been facing for such a long time in the Middle East. And I am looking for that day when we, we now part of the world and the Islamic countries, can make a new start. And I'm absolutely sure that it can be done. I firmly believe that there's not a single conflict in the world that can be solved. And I hope that when you, you who have graduated here today, go and start your work, I hope that you keep this in mind and keep the politicians in line and try to impress on them that there's, we should not accept that conflicts become frozen and they are not solved forever. I have only one last recommendation for you, and it's I am following. Every morning when you wake up, think that this is your first day in your life. Why? Because I think it's marvelous to wake up every morning and think, what can I do today? And maintain that intellectual curiosity which I hope that this university has given. I wish you good luck, I thank for the honor that has been bestowed to me, and good luck with your future work. Thank you.
George Soros for his extraordinary vision and generosity in conceiving this institution, Leon Botstein for his creative guidance in chairing the Board of Trustees, and Yehuda Elkanah for his decade of inspired leadership as president and rector. But above all, let me be the first to congratulate all of you and ask you if you would not mind rising and giving yourselves a hand.
George Soros described my predecessor as, and I quote, a true revolutionary. I would only add that he's the best kind of revolutionary, one who builds up instead of tearing down. Yehuda, you and the trustees and the faculty and the students of CEU have built a truly magnificent university, a university with a growing reputation for excellence in teaching and research, a university that bridges academic disciplines and combines specific knowledge with universal values, a university on the verge of its own transformation from a regional to a global institution. Now, I'll leave it for another time to assess all that's been accomplished since CEU was founded, but now is the time for me to say formally thank you to Yehuda. You'll be a hard act to follow, not least in the exotic department where you are a real superstar, the culinary arts. <laughs> the final new beginning I want to speak about is the one that CEU itself has launched. The story of this university's transformation is right here in this hall. You come from 92 countries, a greater range of nationalities than any other graduating class in CEU history. You represent a dazzling array of cultures, backgrounds, and experiences. In his speech in Cairo on June 4th, Barack Obama observed, and I quote, that human history has often been a record of tribes and nations and religions subjugating one another in pursuit of their own interests. Yet in this new age, he continued, such attitudes are self-defeating. CEU should be at the forefront of this new age. Its future leader, as its future leaders, you have learned to make your differences an asset, not the obstacle they have often been at other times in history in the pursuit of peace and justice. And as you live, leave this university, you have a great advantage over students who are graduating today from other institutions. You are not entering this world mosaic for the first time. You've been in it all along. Here at CEU, you have worked with colleagues from many nations to study the world's great challenges, from economic recessions to downturns in democracy, from crimes against humanity to crises in the environment, from problems of local governance, the breakdowns of transnational cooperation. You're ready now to apply what you've learned in this global laboratory to make a difference in your own countries and far beyond. And while you're challenged changing the paradigm, CEU will be continuing its own transformation, expanding across continents and across disciplines in a quest to understand the rapidly changing world of human interactions. One of the ways we'll do this is by establishing a new school of public policy. To broaden our reach and deepen our inquiry, we will partner with institutions and scholars from across the globe. For example, with the intellectual and philanthropic leadership of George Soros, we will launch an international project to support research that challenges conventional thinking in economics and finance. And as we work to build a CEU School of Public Policy, an important partner will be our sister organization, the Open Society Institute. Other public policies, schools study government. Our school will be in a unique position to study and research the development of civil society. And as CEU alumni, and you are now, you can help this great enterprise by introducing students who will follow you to the knowledge you acquire and contributing your loyalty and support to the global mission of this remarkable university. And in the end, CEU will be guided by the principles that governed it from the very beginning. These are the enduring values you will take with you as you leave, the pursuit of truth, wherever it may lead, honest engagement with the historical record, a willingness to take risks, the relentless search for new ideas, deep respect for diversity, determination to be an agent of change, and a commitment to resolve differences through rational debate and the democratic process. I want to say a brief word at this point about what is happening in Iran, because it relates to all these principles. There are times when history stands still in response to the bravery of those who seek to shape it in the cause of justice. 
Not long ago, there was such a time in the history of this region. At such times, the world should pause to witness truth in silent solidarity. This is such a time in Iran, and the people's bravery commands our attention. The poet Cheslov Milos wrote from the shadows of a closed society, and in doing so, he described what it takes to make a society truly open. There could be no question of force triumphant. We live in an age of justice and the pursuit of truth. Do not mention force, or you will be upholding fallen doctrines. Restless, honest, and open, the search that guides this university is a search for truth that control, can control force and uphold justice. This is the search that will guide you in your lives as you strive to connect your ideals with the challenging realities all around you. Let me conclude with the words of Václav Havel, who tells us what it means to live within the struggle that we all face, face each day. The struggle to make that elusive connection between what we see and what we believe. I am not an optimist because all does not end well. Nor am I a pessimist because all does not end badly. Instead, I am a realist who carries hope and hope is the belief that freedom has meaning and is worth the struggle. Thank you very much.
coming, and I find rather arcane procedure that we still have to go through. A uh, very special moment has arrived for our graduates. Members of the class of 2009, please stand. As you know, one more small ceremonial step remains. So in a moment, but not just yet, I would ask you to first move the tassel on your cap from the right side to the left side, slowly and deliberately. <laughs> this symbolic gesture I'm told formally identifies you as a university graduate. Are you ready? <laughs> oh yeah, are you ready? Now please move your tassel to the left. Distinguished guests, colleagues, families and friends, please join me in applauding the new members of Central European University Class of 2009.